So, if you want to be better at math, you should start to avoid doing this. First disclaimer, I'm not really a professional teacher in school, college, or in a university. I'm just a student as well in college here in the Philippines. So, all my opinions in this video are only based on my personal experience. So, if you have any other suggestion or tips in regarding this matter, please don't hesitate and feel free to comment it down below. So, the one thing that most people do when learning math is immediately searching out for the answer in the internet. But, 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 but by man, we need to maximize technology and save time. Well, I know that math is a very objective subject. A specific question requires a specific answer. So it's really tempting to just search out answers in the internet, especially when we have online calculators such as Simulab, Mathway, and many more. But the thing is, what math tests us in is our skill to solve problems or problem solving. If we simply search out the answer in the Google, then who solves the problem? Definitely, it's not you. Not me either. It's just another random person in the internet that solves the problem. So who gains or who improves in this situation? Well, no one. Probably you, but only in a small amount. And that small amount wouldn't get us to where we want to be in math. So, 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 bye man. Does that mean that I should only do my exercises alone and I'm not allowed to ask for help? Mm, yes, but only for the first time you encounter a specific problem. Here I present 5 steps on what you should do when you encounter a difficult math problem. Step number 1. Study math alone at first only. Well, you know, this is the toughest part in learning. Learning math or in different fields, but you know, this is where most of the learning occurs. Why? Well, after this part, you'll be able to know what parts you really need help in. Example, say if you're studying derivatives and you try to answer the exercise alone. If you try to immediately surf, search for the answers in the internet probably, then you, will, you won't have a good grasp of What's your strengths and weaknesses in that specific topic? Unlike if you did it alone, you might notice that you struggle most in applying the chain rule and such. So instead of just asking for help with the things that you already know, after this part, you'll have a good awareness of what to ask for help in. So this is the first step. Step number two. As your friends or classmates, or your peers in general. I believe that this is a good step after doing it alone since when you're doing it alone, you now have a good understanding or assessment of the parts that you're struggling. And when you try to ask your peers, especially those who are experiencing the same problem or have an idea on that same problem, then usually when you Ask them their feedback tends to stop more than just by searching the answers in the internet. Since usually when it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, it's less formal and it's more casual. So there's more freedom for, uh, for him or her to explain a certain topic or certain idea that you are confused in. In your understanding of the math problem you are currently taking. So, what if your peers were not able to fully answer the problem or question that you have? Now, this is the time that you are allowed to check the internet or check the Google. But I suggest that when checking the Google, still be careful since not everything you see in it is true. Sometimes you might find a solution to a particular problem only to find out that it was incorrect or there were a lot of errors as well in that solution. 
So the key in this one is search for a lot of resources. If you can search 10, go. If you can search 50, go. You know, the more resource, resources that you have, the more chance that there were there will be similar patterns in it that you'll see that you'll be more confident in the solution presented in it. So that's the key. Search for a lot, not search for less. Lastly, if all else fails, just ask your teacher. Now, it might seem scary at first in trying to ask your teachers, but know that your teachers are actually really generous and kind when answering questions, except when the teacher is really just you know, crazy. But for the most part, teachers are really thoughtful when you ask them questions. They really try their best to explain a certain topic in, the, in a way that you would understand it and if you still don't understand it, you can still email them and they'd be more than kind enough to answer it. So just give it a shot. You know, they won't view you as stupid. They would actually think more of you as a student that is really engaged in his or her class. Now, finally, after all that is said and done, after all the questions, after all the asking for help and all, the last piece of the puzzle is to go back in doing it alone. Why? Well, during exams, you won't have your peers, you won't have the Google, or your teacher won't be able to assist you in answering the problems. So, during exam time or quiz time, it all boils down to you and your confidence in yourself in answering those problems. That is why it is very important to reinforce everything you've learned so far from step 2 to step 4, back to yourself. So the idea here is that we first start alone, then we, if we can't do it alone, or if there are gaps in our learning, we go to our peers. If there's still, still not enough, we go check the Google. Now if the Google is still confusing, last resort is our teacher. Now after that, after all that one, don't forget to go back and try to do it alone. Because if you just try to rely on the solution or the sketch that your teacher gave you, it will still not be a complete understanding that you will have in a specific example. So always go back to doing it alone, especially when the problem is, you know, kind of complex. So I really believe that this should be the way to go instead of just quickly searching out the ads over the internet. So to end this, let's end this with this quote. The internet is a very powerful tool. It can be your own weapon or your enemy your choice.